In the last video, we spied and captured the attributes of each button individually and created a separate page for clicking each button. Now let's see how to make use of the dynamic attributes and simplify this. Let's open the application modeler. Select button 1 and click the match column. If you remember, in the last video, we saw that out of these five matching attributes, only the ordinal number changes for each button, but rest of the four attributes remain the same. So instead of capturing each button as an individual element, we can set the match type of ordinal attribute as dynamic, and this will allow us to pass the ordinal as a parameter instead of statically entering it here. This means that I don't need the rest of these elements, so I can go ahead and delete them. And I can rename it to just button instead of button one, as we are not going to have individual elements for each button. I'll click apply and OK. Now I'll also delete the pages for buttons two plus and equals. And rename this page to click button instead of click button one. Okay, now in order to pass the value of the original attribute dynamically, double click this navigate stage and under actions you can see this column called params which stands for parameters. Click this button and you will see all the attributes that are set as dynamic in the application modeler. We have set only the original attribute as dynamic and it is listed here. We will set the value to 5, click OK and OK again. Now if I reset and click run, the button 1 is pressed. Now let's say if you want to press the button 7, the ordinal number for button 7 is 1, 2, 3. So I'll set the ordinal as 3 and if I reset and run, it pressed the button 7. Alright, so that really works. Now instead of editing the properties of this navigate stage every time, I can simply place a data item and name it as ordinal, set the data type as number and click OK. Then I'll go to the elements parameters, delete this value, then drag and drop the ordinal data item. And I'll click OK, OK again. Now if we give the ordinal number in this data item, it will be passed as a parameter automatically but realistically, you are not going to provide the ordinal number as input. Instead, you will input the actual number or the operator. So, we will create another data item called input button. Set the data type as text and click OK. Now, let's make a note of the ordinal number for the four buttons. One, two, plus and equal. So, I'll open a notepad and the ordinal number for 1 is 5, 2 is 11, plus is 23, and equal to is 28. Now let's create a choice stage. And name it as button choice. Enter the first choice as button 1 and the criteria is input button is equal to 1. I'll similarly add the choices for rest of the three buttons. Now I'll click OK. Now we need to add a calc stage for each of these four choices to update the original data item. So I'll add the first calc stage, link it, double click, name it as button one ordinal. The ordinal for number one is five. So I'll type five in the expression and store it in ordinal. Click OK. We'll repeat this for rest of the three choices.
All right, now we will link all these four calc stages to the click navigate stage. So let me first move this calc and in stages to the right and link. Okay, now if we give a value in the input button and start the process, it will come to the button choice stage. Check the value given in the input data item, take the appropriate path and update the corresponding value in the ordinal data item. Then when it comes to this click stage, the ordinal value will be picked from the data item and passed on as a dynamic attribute and the relevant button is pressed. So that's how it's going to work. So let's test this. I'll give the value 2 in the input button. And if I reset and run, you can see that the button 2 was pressed successfully. Now let's see how to pass this input button value from the process. This is where the input and output of Blue Prism comes into picture. If you double click the start stage, you can see there is a tab called inputs. And if you double click the end stage, you can see there is a tab called outputs. The inputs tab allow you to send inputs to this page when you call this page from a process or some other object or even from a different page in the same object. Similarly, the output page will allow you to return an output to the page from which this page was called. We will see a lot of examples for inputs and outputs in detail in the upcoming videos. For now, we will just see how to use this inputs tab to get the value for the input button data item. So I'll double click the start stage, click add, give a name for the input parameter. Now this is the same name which will show up in the page from where you are calling this page. So I'll give it as input button value and I'll enter the description as input value for the button. The data type will be text and you want to store it in the data item input button. I'll click OK. Save the object. I'll then go back to the calculator process and we need to change the actions for these four stages. So I'll double click the action stage, click one, and you can see that it says missing action, click button one. Yes, it is missing because we renamed it. So if we select the action drop down, you will see the action click button. And if I select that, it lasts for the input input button value. So I'll mention the value one in double quotes because this is a text data type and I'll click OK. Similarly, I will update the rest of the three actions. I'll close the calculator and if I click reset and run, It worked exactly as expected. So I hope you got a good understanding on how to use dynamic attributes to pass the parameters.